Hello, guys. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, for you guys to have me here. So let me tell you a little bit about these two amazing technology, Wi-Fi 6 and, uh, and 5G, and how we can leverage on them to deliver superior uh, quality of experience for our consumer. So uh, a, little, uh, a few words about AirTie. So our mission statement is to basically empower service providers around the world to deliver exceptional digital experiences uh, leveraging on Wi-Fi technology. Um, our business is, uh, is developed worldwide. We, we work with about 50 operators worldwide, uh, have about 33 million households uh, where our technology is being deployed and the cloud uh, that is using uh, to orchestrate all your consumer devices uh, is, is, is leveraged in about you know, 1.2 million uh, devices. Uh, so let's look at Wi-Fi 6 and 5G and how they can complement and coexist. So today, uh, if you look at the enterprise side, we basically know that uh, in about 98% of organization, uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi 6 and 5G uh, is already being tested and, uh, and already half of the organization have already taken active steps to use and deploy both technology. Uh, the good thing is on the industry body uh, standards, uh, they are already very actively working on making sure that both standards are going to enable uh, consumer to, to roam securely and seamlessly uh, between, between Wi-Fi and, uh, and 5G, which is great news and it's giving us a solid foundation to build better product going forward. Um, let me give you a short example. Uh, this is a slide that has been worked on with one of our partners, Intel, and Intel is already uh, building technology that will ensure that connected car connecting to 5G network will then distribute um, a Wi-Fi 6 uh, for, for in-driving experience, making sure that consumers that are using their everyday uh, connected clients basically co connect in the car like they do at home. And that's, that's going to be uh, one of the reasons why these two technologies can coexist and be better used by consumer. But what if the world was deciding to go 5G only? Is that possible, do you think? Well, if you look at some Cisco data, today about 52% of all uh, traffic is already going through fix and Wi-Fi. So transitioning all that traffic to 5G uh, would mean significant investment with regards to infrastructure for, for 5G tower and uh, would basically lead the current infrastructure probably to crash uh, and it would take a lot of time to build it. Also to keep in mind that 5G uh, residential 5G doesn't really well go through walls, which means that it would bring significant limitation from a consumer perspective, leading for a degraded experience. So we need to find a way to make the two uh, coexist. Uh, another point is Wi-Fi is already playing a huge part in 5G development around the world. As an example, we are working with many operators um, partners of ours in order to enable um, them to reach more consumers by offering proposition leading them to leverage on the 5G network as a new access network technology uh, in order to offer a fixed broadband proposition based on 5G that are then terminated for consumer uh, with Wi-Fi. So the two uh, creates this, this perfect combination and allows operator to effectively increase their revenue by reaching more customers worldwide. And many deployments like this uh, will happen in the coming few months and a few years to come. Also, one key important for, uh, one key data for operators that you need to understand uh, is the data of load. Already 59% uh, of the mobile traffic basically is offloaded to Wi-Fi in 2022, and that number will tend to uh, continue growing. So it is really important for the maximization of your capex as an operator uh, to, ensure that, uh, to ensure that the capability of offloading is there, and it's also good for consumer because they can consume more data for a much cheaper price. So why do we believe Wi-Fi 6 as a head start. Well, again, let's look at the two lens, the enterprise side and, um, and the residential side. So enterprise first. 
uh, already about 70% of all organization are basically actively uh, deploying a Wi-Fi 6 solution for enterprise application. Uh, and that number, of course, will keep on growing. And uh, the same organization, 60% uh, of them are basically busy with their 5G. So as you can see with that number, Wi-Fi 6 is in the lead. But the presence of Wi-Fi 6 uh, from a residential perspective is much more ubiquitous. Uh, this year, there will be 2.5 billion Wi-Fi 6 devices that are going to be shipped. Another 1.5 uh, Wi-Fi 6, 1.5 billion Wi-Fi 6 uh, silicon will be, you know, shipped to uh, to manufacturer, uh, leading, you know, leading Wi-Fi 6 to be clearly the dominant standard, and uh, the only thing that will be offered to consumer going forward. Um, it is also very important to realize that within Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi 6 has effectively already evolved. As, I, as you can see on the slide, Wi-Fi 6E, which is the, 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 the next generation Wi-Fi 6, is already a big uh, part of the deployment. If I look at our business, we see that already over 95% of what we ship to our partners, uh, CSPs around the world, is, is, is Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. So that's the dominating uh, dominating protocol and next year onwards you will start seeing Wi-Fi 7 which is around the corner and that will further expand uh, uh, this uh, particular protocol. So how do we then build a, st a solution, connectivity solution uh, that will basically uh, deliver perfect experience to consumer? So we've been trying at Airtise to better understand how we can leverage and help our operators uh, to use the two solutions to make them coexist, to deliver benefit for the operators, but to also deliver benefit for the consumer. And looking at the data, we found something quite interesting. So looking at the million households where we have developed our technology, we know that about 75% of all uh, homes where we are deployed are using less than 50% of, of the 5 gigahertz bands uh, on the Wi-Fi side offering basically significant opportunity uh, to, uh, to leverage on that untapped uh, capacity from a residential perspective. So if you think about a consumer that basically roams, uh, that goes on and about, so you're connected um, at home, but you, go, you get, go out and you basically want to still carry on consuming uh, connectivity. Um, when you go outside, it's very difficult for you, for an end user, to know uh, which hotspot to choose from. Uh, first problem, you're not going to necessarily know uh, which one will deliver you the best uh, quality of experience. Second problem is once you're connected to a particular hotspot, um, uh, uh, you, you run the risk that you are going to degrade the quality of experience of that particular household and therefore causing huge issue uh, for, for the person that is uh, in this house enjoying Wi-Fi and suddenly seeing degraded experience. So at Airtice, we found a solution to address that particular solution by developing a smart hotspot management technology uh, which operators can deploy at scale uh, on all their residential install base and uh, integrate into their mobile offering. And that will create a solution where a consumer can just uh, seamlessly connect to different residential hotspots without any form of physical authentication. So it's all happening manually and seamlessly uh, and at, uh, with proper security in place to make sure that you can enjoy the data. And the same uh, protocol allows uh, operators to effectively do a lot of uh, automated uh, offloading, which is going to help them to better manage their cost reduce their cost to serve and optimize uh, effectively their capex. So that particular solution has been jointly developed by, by us together with one of the industry uh, body called the WBA. And this open roaming standard uh, is now being trialed in many countries and the, it's helping effectively the convergence of both 5G and Wi-Fi 6 in the best possible way, helping consumer uh, to enjoy better connectivity and, and operators to optimize uh, their, their network, both the fixed and the wireless network, in the most efficient possible way.
However, we should not stop there because this only gives you a connectivity wrapper uh, which will ensure that as a consumer you can be connected uh, to one or the other network. But that's not enough. We believe that all operators now really need to spend a lot of time and attention looking at the quality of experience to make sure that the consumer needs are better served and will uh, enable uh, them very sticky experience and to deliver the best possible experience to consumer. So let's look at a couple of data that we have gathered uh, for you today. So uh, we've discovered uh, doing research with some of our partner a new phenomenon called uh, the digital anxiety. This is something that has emerged uh, effectively during COVID and it's uh, the stress that people experience when their life is solely dependent on basically a little screen and an internet. You will all relate to the use case where your kids are screaming on you because the Wi-Fi doesn't work uh, and that you have a, an interview with your boss on Teams and you see a fixed screen and the audio is shit and et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, and this, of course, has increased because people now are basically solely dependent on connectivity, looking at the screen, and that's created a lot of anxiety. That's, that, and that, that's, a, that's a big number. As you can see, 67% of remote workers uh, declare that phenomenon, and that's something that uh, needs to be addressed. The interesting bit is this digital anxiety uh, is not purely about Wi-Fi. Now people have concern about the overall quality of their connectivity, but also about uh, the, the safety of being online and the, the privacy angle uh, with a lot of, you know, lot of well, bad press that has happened in the last few years related to privacy services. So how can we future-proof that and address this particular uh, consumer needs with better proposition? Another research that we've conducted is leading a consumer uh, to basically say that re they really would like operators to take charge with regards to providing everything that the consumer needs to experience best possible connectivity, but they're also willing, 80% of them almost, to pay a bit more their uh, broadband operators to make sure that the service that they get will deliver that, that peace of mind, quality of experience. So the, the, there, is, there is an opportunity for operators, again, to go and offer a bit more premium services than what they have done uh, by the past. And what we see here is uh, effectively the evolution of, of consumer needs. Um, we started, we started um, uh, you know, once upon a time offering, operators were just offering speed, uh, but that really was never meeting consumers' uh, expectation. And now we are in this phase where um, offering Wi-Fi and related cyber, cyber security services, uh, et cetera, et cetera, is now evolving to consumer demanding for you operators, fixed and mobile, to deliver a guarantee quality of experience on the back of personal, personalized value-added services. And why does it matter? Well, I think you all need to look at what people do when they are consuming the internet. And we've put here uh, the five key leading use cases that are effectively driving um, internet usage in the home and out of the home. Um, entertainment is absolutely key, of course. I'm talking about the Netflix of the world. Uh, the home office use case, as I referred before, uh, using Microsoft Teams and all the, the application that allows you to connect uh, with your office and your colleagues, uh, which are basically on on the time. Education, uh, specifically during COVID, has exploded, and there is, a, 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 there is a true shift towards more online application, and that phenomenon is there to stay, even though schools have reopened now. Smart home, uh, which is taking up an awful lot, and eventually gaming, and in this case, we're talking about uh, online gaming. And people are, are effectively doing all that throughout the day. So we have seen also a significant evolution in the amount of time that people uh, consume the internet, uh, which has gone from a couple of hours a day to now 12 to 14 hours. And you will see all these, almost all these five use cases happening at different parts of the day for different people. So while you work, the kids are playing online, um, and you need to make sure that all the consumers are getting that experience 
in order to prevent your kids to, to your kids to scream on you because Wi-Fi is down or they have just gotten killed when they play uh, online because there is too much latency. So latency management is one of the other angle where you need to uh, cater for. So how do we build value-added services that will make sure that these five use cases are catered for and you will be able to deliver a perfect quality of experience services uh, for your end consumer. We've tested a uh, similar type of uh, proposition towards consumer and we have seen that uh, about a third of, of consumer today uh, are basically willing to buy uh, such a proposition right away and when testing the appetite to pay on top of your plain broadband, uh, we've gotten this number uh, 10 euros a month, a month, uh, which basically leads to an increase uh, ARPU of 120 euros a year uh, for operators, which is effectively massive. So that, that shows you uh, the appetite and the size of the opportunity for, for operators around the world. So, you know, AirTice really want to work um, with operators to help them to meet these customer needs. So to recap, a couple of angles to keep in mind. First of all, convergence is the future. It's important for the industry, both on the fixed side and on the mobile side, to work on delivering this joint quality of experience to make sure that the connectivity layer is sorted. However, that's not enough. Second of all, we really need to work towards elevating quality of experience uh, and deliver harmonious solution. As an example here is one of our uh, product offering that allows parents to set certain type of rules protecting their kids to access you know, content that you don't want them to access. And the beauty of that, of that particular product is that it's a residential product that can be taken away from home and will work on any third party Wi-Fi or on any cellular network. So you have the peace of mind as a parent that your kids are not going to end up on websites undesirable for you and will effectively be protected with their digital habit. And all these uh, type of uh, products and services have huge benefit uh, from a customer satisfaction. You can see a, a massive shift in customer satisfaction via NPS, but also massive reduction in, in the cost associated with running that kind of services for operators, leading overall to a better, well, a bit happy customers and, uh, and happy operators. So to recap, promise of connectivity, anywhere and anytime, both for end user delivering great quality of experience and for on the operator side leading to basically creating new, new revenue stream, uh, a reduction of cost and overall building a solid foundation for the future delivering perfect connectivity. Thank you. Just got time for a, a few questions, if that's if that's all right, Nicholas. Sure. Um, has anyone got any questions um, um, from the floor at all before we go to the virtual? Yeah. Hi there. There was a statistic you showed about the five gigahertz not being utilised in the home. Could you sort of explain why or what was behind that? The the residential yeah. uh, five gigahertz. Yeah. It's effectively the fact that uh, um, there is a lot of spare capacity on network, um, and that's, that was the measurement of what could be consumed on a permanent basis versus what is being consumed. And what you see is, is uh, today um, on networks, a lot of the connectivity is distributed between 2.4 gigahertz, as you know, and 5 gigahertz, and the 5 is, is, is far from being filled. So we have just taken extracted data from, from our own cloud to effectively extrapolate how much of that spare capacity is left uh, potentially to be used. That number will increase because we have of course seen a shift of, of data going from 2.4 to 5 over the years. Now 5 is getting filled up very quickly but 5 offers so much more capacity than 2.4 that it's far from being filled. That, that's, that's where it's coming from. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so we've got, got a, 
our first one here. So, um, how can the industry capitalise on the convergence of Wi-Fi and 5G within the home? Which is it's quite an open-ended question, but so. I, I, I think I think there are there are well multiple angles to that uh, question. So um, from an operator perspective, many operators that were traditionally fixed operators or mobile operators are either starting to join forces or you've seen uh, a lot of uh, M and A activities in that space. So more and more the ISPs are being converged operators and they want to utilize both network, but. Uh, of course, infrastructure costs a lot of money to build, specifically if you need to build a, a brand new 5G network, you need a lot of pillars and antennas. And so effectively, now operators, they need to look at, at this converge of operator in order to offer a consumer bundle that will uh, leverage on both the fixed and, and mobile operator, but in an integrated fashion. And that, that's basically the, the, the move that you can see uh, now, uh, more and more operators are offering this Converge offer, which also offer, from a consumer perspective, lots of benefit. No, so number one, no bill shock, because before you would get two bills, one for the fix, one for the network. Now it's all integrated into a bundle offer, which typically is capped. So the consumer has the peace of mind to pay a set uh, um, fee monthly, and that, that's what it is. Um, you can integrate a lot of the services. So traditionally, fixed operator would offer value-added services um, uh, that would work only on the fixed network. Now these services are more and more pervasive. So it gives a much more compelling uh, user experience uh, because now you can benefit from all these services in and out of the home and roam seamlessly within network without you know, noticing it. Well, that's going to be the case uh, soon. Um, and and managing the services like this will eventually lead operators to also reduce their cost of operation because the networks will be effectively managed as one integrated network going forward, uh, which is you know, cheaper cost to run uh, to maximize the, the revenue and the benefit while really delivering this compelling um, experience to consumer. And if you get to that stage by offering fixed proposition, mobile proposition that in the case of a family of five, as an example, everybody is using the same broadband, everybody is using uh, that mobile operators. And if you can enable <clears throat> some of the services that I've mentioned, the work from home for the parents, the um, enhanced gaming for the kids, it makes the, the service very sticky. You will not leave if you are, all your needs are being appropriately catered, and, and that's where you see, uh, you optimize the retention towards your customers. And I, and I guess it like a sort of a family bundle kind of thing. Exactly. Is probably more affordable as well as, you know. Exactly. Lots of separate contracts, yeah. Um, just in regards to like um, the technology itself and Wi-Fi 6, can you just elaborate on some of the benefits and things like extended battery life and this kind of thing and so what, what, what kind of things can we see that elevate Wi-Fi 6 above normal Wi-Fi? Uh, why, so you know Wi-Fi 6 we all we are all fairly old enough in the room uh, to have known uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G and the same for Wi-Fi. You know, we Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6. That's just the natural evolution of two separate standards that effectively coexist and go kind of at the same speed. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, helps effectively to be able to offer um, a proposition to your customers if your, your incoming broadband pipeline in the home is say one gig, Wi-Fi 6 will allow operators to distribute that one gig everywhere in the house, which was not the case with the previous, uh, the previous uh, technology because there were some physical limitations to the protocol. And Wi-Fi 7 will basically uh, go all the way to uh, 10 gig, which is effectively going to be aligned with mobile. So I think that that's one of the, the examples. You know, the speed will be much more one-to-one -one now. I think the, the biggest effort that is done with, with Wi-Fi 6 and the N60 and the upcoming standard is effectively the transition to, uh, to um, unlicensed spectrum technology, which is what essentially Wi-Fi is, but to a technology that 
allow a bit similar to what uh, the cellular technology does to uh, deliver quality of experience, to prioritize some type of traffic over other, to make sure that, that again, from an end user perspective, operators can truly control that experience and deliver this, this, seamless, uh, this seamless experience that will just work, which is basically what we all want. And, and, and just, just in regards to your AirTees in terms of the products you offer and that kind of thing, I mean, what, what, uh, can you just talk a little bit about the, the, the smart Wi-Fi sort of portfolio, and the management suite, and these kind of things, just so people get a better idea of what you offer? Sure. So today, the, the core product is, is related to, to that smart Wi-Fi, which is a technology that effectively will enable uh, all your connected clients, so I'm talking about these guys, tablets, whatever is connected to the internet, to have uh, best possible connectivity. Because again, we are in a situation now where we've seen a device explosion. So the number of connected clients, well, a couple of year, years ago was you know, below 10, and now it's in the, in the 30, and will continue exponentially because everything is connected, including your oven, your fridge, and, and all your smart home equipment. Uh, and that requires uh, a lot of management because devices cannot do that by themselves. So you would be in a situation where a couple of devices would be well connected, everything else will have a degraded experience. So our solution allows to ensure that all the, all the devices will have the right type of, of throughput and broadband at the right moment and to orchestrate if a device, powerful device is doing browsing, the little device that does video will get priority over the browsing because you need more pipe for uh, video than for browsing. So as an example, leveraging on this, uh, and it relates to the personalized services that I was mentioning, uh, what we want going forward is to work with operators to offer a solution that, for instance, will optimize a certain type of application. So optimize, for instance, everything that you need to work from home. Make sure that your, your team session, again, uh, will, get, uh, will get a prioritized pipeline to make sure that that particular application is going to be protected from, from the rest and then to manage application. Uh, and um, so that's, that's one example, right? Optimize work from home. Uh, similar principle happening in the, in the gaming. Um, and then smart home solution to make sure that we have a converged way to manage the different type of smart home devices that you have in the home, which is, you know, one is from Nest, the other one is from Amazon. These devices don't necessarily talk to each other. How do you make sure that you converge them to deliver a unique, harmonized experience to your consumer, which, again, will make your offer more sticky because you help the consumer to solve uh, all these problems uh, of uh, broadband. Lovely. Well put. A nice sticky harmony in the home. Exactly. That's, that's lovely. Um, thank you very much, Nicholas. That's all we've got time for. Just Super. Wrap up now. But thank you very much. Thank you very much.